everybody. Welcome to Hope City Kids at Home Week 6. We're so excited to be with you here virtually and we miss you so much. We are so eager to be with you back in our building once the time is appropriate. Um, so we're going to get ready here to dive into our worship song followed by our video lesson. See you guys soon. Sorry. Oh. Hello, everybody. My name's Jacob, but my friends call me Jake. I don't know how all these balloons got here. It must just be a, another hilarious April Fool's Month joke from my friends. <laughs> and it's a good one. But I can't find anything. I mean, it took me forever just to find this camera. Hello? Camera? Where are you? I need to talk about humility. Camera? Camera? Hello, where are you? I need to talk about humility. So, let's talk about humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Now, what's a good way to describe humility? Okay, so let's say I was a world famous balloon maker. I could be all like, 
I make balloons better than anybody. I deserve the best seat in the house at the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the balloon convention. I deserve the best seat in the house at the balloon convention. Meh. What if I won a contest for best color box puzzle solving? I could be all like, I can cube solve faster than you. I'm smart and you're not. <laughs> or I could be like, hey, if you want to know more about cube solving, I can teach you because I'm smart and also nice. Lamps or electricity. You know everything there is to know about electricity. You're like Alfred Einstein. This lamp works because of power going through the wire into the light bulb and it makes it bright and stuff and I can control it with a switchy poo. I know everything there is to know about electricity and light and things like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was really weird. I don't really know anything about electricity. Anyway, today's story is about these people who thought they knew everything about what God was up to, but they really had a lot more to discover. I've got a lot more to discover too. Like, where's my bed? And my TV? And my floor? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. The sun was still high in the skies. Cleopas and his friend, who we'll call Micah, started their journey to the town of Emmaus. The day was hot and their sandals kicked up dust off the hard packed road. They were exhausted by the difficult events of the past few days. Seven miles, we'll make it by dinner time. You believe it? All that stuff the women said when they came back from the garden. I don't really feel like talking. What if it's true? Have you ever seen a dead man come back to life? Lazarus? You didn't see that. You heard about well, it. Well, lots of people saw it. Oh, don't look, but fast walker behind us. Uh, just get over. He'll pass. He's slowing down. You know him? I'm not looking. That makes it weird. Nope. Don't know him. Great. Now he knows we're talking about him. Way to make it awkward. Hi. Hi. The man had caught up and now matched his pace to theirs. So what are you talking about as you walk along? Cleopas and Micah exchanged a surprise glance. Cleopas slowed to a stop. Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? What things? The man began to walk again, as if he expected Cleopas and Micah to join him. What do we do? Go with it. <clears throat> the things about Jesus of Nazareth, he was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did. But the chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. And they nailed him to a cross. Yeah. We'd hoped he was the one who was going to set Israel free. This all happened three days ago. But early this morning, something crazy happened. Uh, some of the women who followed him went to the tomb, but they didn't find his body. They saw angels who said Jesus was alive. And then some of our friends went to the tomb. They saw it empty, too. Cleopas and Micah glanced over at the stranger to see how he would take the story. How foolish you are. Excuse me? How long it takes you to believe all that the prophets said. Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Uh, what? Cleopas and Micah were floored. The stranger had started out by asking them questions. Now it appeared he was schooling them. The whole story is laid out already in scripture and everything written by Moses and the prophets. The stranger reminded them of scriptures they had heard since they were children. Words written thousands of years before showed how Jesus will be born how he would suffer, and how he would die. So you see, things were supposed to happen this way. This is incredible. You're saying that God has been planning this day for thousands of years? Yeah, but if that's true, then you're saying Jesus is alive? As the stranger smiled at them, Cleopas and Micah realized 
they had reached Emmaus. Oh, uh, this is us. The stranger nodded and kept walking. Wait, stay with us. It's, it's nearly evening. The stranger joined them at the place they were staying and sat down to dinner with them. This looks like a really fresh loaf of rye. You want to bless the food? The man took the bread and looked up to heaven. Thank you, Father. Then he broke the bread, giving each of them a piece. It was then that God had opened their eyes. Cleopas and Micah saw clearly who this man was. Jesus? It's you. As soon as the men recognized him, Jesus disappeared from sight. That was real, right? Jesus broke this bread. He gave it to us. I think deep down I knew it. He explains to us what the scriptures meant. Weren't we excited as he talked with us on the road? We have to tell everyone. Right now. The men were far too excited to wait until the morning. Now, even though it was dark now, they raced the entire way back to Jerusalem. When they reached the place where the disciples were staying, the men could barely contain themselves. What's going on? Are you okay? We have seen Jesus. He's alive. Jesus' friends gathered around as Cleopas and Micah shared the whole story. They were amazed to discover how much bigger God's story was than they expected. Okay, so it doesn't matter how important you are or how talented you are or how much you think you know things. Things will still happen to you that you don't see coming, like I didn't see a room full of balloons coming today. Being humble means admitting there are things you can't do and things you don't know. I am really good at that. That wasn't very humble. Those guys on the road with Jesus thought they knew everything God had planned. That's why when Jesus died, they were like, no way. But Jesus showed them God knew what he was doing all along. For like thousands of years, God left clues that he was sending someone to save the world someone from Abraham's family, a king, like King David, and he would come to earth as a baby, like that prophet guy Isaiah said. There were even clues that a savior would die and come back to life. All that came true with Jesus. So when you expect things to go a certain way, even if you like 100% know things are gonna go that way, they may not. And that's okay, because nobody knows the future, except for God. Hey, maybe we can look into the Bible for clues to what God's plan is for us. Let me see if I can find my Bible. Ah! Oh. No, that's not it. Okay, but there's one verse I remember. It's kind of a clue. This guy Paul wrote, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. I think that means even things that seem bad will turn out good in the end. Pretty cool, huh? So I don't need to know everything that's going to happen because God's in control. Here's one thing to remember today. There's always more to discover about God's plan. We're never going to know everything. That's why we've got to keep searching. I'm going to look for my Bible one more time. I want to see if there's any more clues. Not what I expected, but I think it'll do the job. You might want to close your ears for this and your eyes just to be safe. <laughs> Don't worry, Floor. I'll find you. Whoa. at number one this time don't want to be in a world where it's all about me i'll take second to whoever is around me i'm giving up my number one position so we all belong at number one together Shine the light on someone else I'm giving 
this week's video lesson on humility. I love that there's always more to discover about God's plan for us. So what an awesome way it is to close out our lessons on humility for this month. I know that I want to strive to be more humble like Jesus each and every day. And so I want to know, what have you discovered this month about humility? While you are discussing this with your family, sometimes it's fun to do something while you discuss. So, if you have paper clips at home, I began to make a paper clip bracelet, but I did not finish. So, if you have a um, paper clip, you can make a bracelet while you discuss what you have learned about humility this month with your family. I would like to end today by closing us out in prayer. Heavenly Father, like the people who met Jesus on the road to Emmaus, we always want to be eager to learn more more about you, more in school, more that we don't know the answer to, Lord. None of us know everything, and so help us to discover more every single day, Lord. I pray over our week that there would be peace and rest and more to learn about you, Jesus. We love you, and we pray this in your name. And everyone said, Amen. Bye, you guys. Catch you next week.